What's up guys and welcome back to the collection update series. Today we are opening up a pack of Planar Chaos. Welcome back everybody to the collection update series. I hope you guys are doing well. We are going to be doing something really really fun today and really not well advised which is opening up a pack of Planar Chaos. Now, I said this before on our last pack opening, which was Modern Masters. I highly, highly recommend if you have any of these packs available in your collection or if you find them anywhere and you decide to pick them up, for God's sake, don't open them. That's such a bad idea. Don't do what we are about to do. Now, the reason for that is obviously you are taking a huge gamble. These packs are nice packs. They're really fun to open. They're really awesome sets. And so they hold a lot of value unopened. Now. You could certainly get lucky. You might be able to pull something really great out of a pack and it could be amazing. However, it's a very real possibility that that does not happen. And in that case, you're really just throwing money away. Now, I say that knowing that I am not a financial advisor, nor am I a MTG finance kind of guy, but it just seems like obvious math that generally that's a bad idea. Regardless though, we're gonna do it for the content because you know, we, we like to do stupid stuff here on It Resolves and hopefully have a little fun doing it. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to kind of give you some rundown of Planar Chaos, the set itself. It was a fascinating set that really turned magic on its head in some cases and threw cards that were generally identified as one color and kind of pushed them into a completely different color. Examples of stuff like that are Damnation, which is obviously the Black Wrath of God, which is a really powerful card. And in fact, Damnation holds a pretty good price tag. I think it's one of the most valuable cards in the set. Uh, now, all that to say, we do get these color shifted frames on cards that we know are kind of pushed into a different color. And so hopefully we get to see those as we go through the pack today. I will just go ahead and say as well, this was released in 2007. So quite a long time ago, kind of crazy to think. I actually opened this pack back in the day when it was released. It's a huge nostalgia factor for me. So guys, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead. We're going to jump right in. We're going to see what we get. And again, don't do this at home. <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are with this amazing Planar Chaos pack. Again, just a really beautiful one. Uh, I really like this set. Like I said, it is a big nostalgia factor for me because I did open this back up in the day. I actually had some of the like tournament decks, the little decks that they put together for you back in the day, which was really fun as well. Uh, hopefully our focus isn't terrible. We're going to try and fix that as we go through. I know it's a little messy at the moment, but as we're looking at the cards, hopefully that's not too much of a problem. Uh, let's go ahead. There we go. And there we go, guys. Let's see. Let's get the uh, the focus nailed down first. That's not too bad. Little blue. Hopefully I can fix that in, in post. <laughs> uh, but our first card here is a salt, a salt field recluse. Uh, I should also mention before we actually jump in, I'm going to look at this in a limited environment. So we're actually going to look through this like we're drafting the set. I don't know if we're actually going to get a good reasonable pick. I didn't limited draft during this, so I, I did not necessarily, I, I don't have all the knowledge of a true drafter, but I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, our first one here is Saltfield Rec Recluse, though. It's a 1-2 two for 2 and a white. Target creature gets minus 2, minus 0 until the end of the turn. You have to tap it to activate that ability. Importantly to note, this is a rebel, which was a tribal synergy of the set. So just keeping that in mind as we go through, we may see some other rebels in the list or in the pack that actually do work together quite well. Uh, this one isn't that exciting. Obviously, a one, two for three isn't that good. What it does make uh, the opponent do, though, is kind of deal with the fact that they have to have to assume you're going to use this ability on one of their creatures if they attack with it. And so you do kind of get to manipulate the opponent just a little bit, maybe. Uh, that being said, it's definitely not a strong first pick at all. Next up, we have uh, Veiling Oddity, uh, which features the Suspend mechanic, which is a really cool one. So this is three and a blue uh, for a 2-3 with Suspend n four. Uh, for one and a blue. So basically what you can do instead of paying the normal mana cost is you can pay one and a blue, put this card off to the side with four suspend counters on it. Each uh, upkeep during one of your upkeeps, you actually remove one of those counters and when it has none of those counters left on it, it actually comes into play. Uh, now, when the last time counter is removed from Veiling Oddity, uh, while, let me make sure I'm reading this correctly, while it's removed from the game, creatures are unblockable this turn. That's interesting. Uh, so it does give you some unblockable stuff. I, 
I mean, it's kind of a cool card. Again, I don't see it being like a good first pick, but it does seem like a, a decent enough card to be able to be aggressive in blue. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, again, think this is a, a great start though. So we're gonna probably pass on that. Midnight Charm, one black for an instance. Choose one, there was a whole cycle of these. Uh, it deals one damage to target creature and you gain a life or target creature gains first strike until the end of the turn or tap target creature. Uh, these charms are generally thought of as like small, uh, flexible pieces in any given colored deck, in this case black. Uh, and so obviously they're useful in some scenarios, but they're not necessarily something you want to like take early on. They're great to pick later up in the pack when you know what colors you've kind of established yourself in. You can pick this up just thinking of this as like a nice little spell that you can cast as a, uh, a combat trick or, you know, something along those lines. Unfortunately, again, it's definitely not a first pick. Shaper Parasite, one and two blue for a two three with Morph. Uh, Morph was a really interesting mechanic, I believe all the way back in like Onslaught days, maybe? Might be wrong on that, but uh, you can play this card face down as a 2-2 creature for three of any color, but you can also turn it face up for two and a blue at any time, uh, which is really interesting. Um, it allows you to play cards face down and kind of surprise your opponent. Uh, when it's turned face up, target creature gets plus two, minus two, or minus two plus two until the end of the turn. So this is essentially a like small removal spell or a combat trick on a stick. Uh, I don't necessarily, again, think this is amazing, but I would probably think of this as the best card so far. Uh, we'll maybe see how that goes. I'm not 100% sure, but I, uh, I do like this card. Next up, we have Battering Sliver. Uh, this is a 4-4 for 5 and a red. All slivers have trample. So if you don't know, if you haven't been around the game for very long, you may not know what slivers are. Uh, it's been, I guess, a little while since we've really seen them. Slivers are extraordinarily powerful cards in tandem with other slivers. Uh, as you're going through the game, if we find some more slivers in the pack, which is a very real possibility, you'll notice that they say all slivers have something. Uh, in this case, Trample, which is obviously quite good if you are in the Slivers deck. Uh, slivers are a little bit hard to make work in Limited, but Planar Chaos was a very Sliver-heavy set, in which case you could pick up a handful of them and kind of try and make it work. That being said, this is not a reason to be in Slivers. I think if you're going to try and do that, you really want to get one of the huge payoffs, which maybe we'll see later on in the back. Uh, but this is a good one. It's only good in the Slivers deck, though. You do also run the risk of uh, helping out your opponent if they happen to be drafting Slivers, uh, because it does work on your opponent's Slivers as well, so it would actually give them Trample also, which is obviously not good. Next up, we have Firefright Mage, a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. You can pay 1 in a red, discard it, uh, tap it, and discard a card. Target creature can't be blocked this turn except by artifact creatures and or red creatures. Uh, kind of an interesting mechanic here. Uh, I don't love it. I do like the fact that it gives semi-unblockable. Um, it's not necessarily going to work against every deck, so I feel like this is a really good like sideboard option. Uh, against most decks, obviously. Um, but I feel like you're giving away a lot in Limited. Discarding a card is a pretty heavy price to pay when you're kind of having to one for one a lot. Um, now, obviously, the, the plus side of that is you get a potentially unblockable creature, which could win you the game on the spot, depending on where the life totals are at. So there is some merit to this, but uh, it's an early game creature that really you want in the late game, which is kind of an odd place to be. I don't particularly love this, uh, and so again, I think I would pass on it here. Wistful Thinking, two and a blue for a sorcery. Target player draws two cards, then discards four cards. Uh, very interesting here. Um, certainly there are some strategies that you can kind of utilize the, the discard, and it actually works in your favor. I don't know how prevalent that is in uh, Planar Chaos, to be honest. I'm sure there are cards that do take advantage of it, but in general, I don't think it's that good. Uh, and so I wouldn't recommend picking this up. <laughs> uh, it just seems like card disadvantage at like a huge rate, uh, which is generally really bad and limited. So I definitely would pass on that. Ooh, very interesting. Okay, Keldon Marauders. One of the really good aggressive commons in the set. So it's a 3-3 for one and a red, which sounds really good, but 
it does have the vanishing mechanic, in this case vanishing two, uh, which basically says it comes into play with two time counters on it. At the uh, beginning of your upkeep, again, you remove a time counter from it, same as suspend, but in this case, when the last one is removed, you actually sacrifice the creature, which is obviously not that great. But when it comes into play or leaves the battlefield, it deals one damage to target player. So it's actually a little extra aggressive in that case. I actually do like this card in a limited format. So far, I think this is probably the best pick. Uh, while it's not necessarily a great card, it's just a good card in general. It's a really good aggressive two drop, which is kind of what you want in limited. So I'm actually okay with this. I'm gonna set this to the side. We'll see if we actually use it later. Uh, let's make sure also, yeah. All right, Seal of Primordium. Uh, this is that time shifted, or color shifted, excuse me, not time shifted frame, uh, showing us that this was a shift in a uh, color. I believe it would have been the white Seal of Cleansing, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that this is essentially a reprint of in green. It is an enchantment for one in a green. Sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Generally thought of as a sideboard option, not a great card to pick up, of course, early on. There are plenty of artifacts and enchantments you might want to hit, but you don't know what the opponent's going to have. And so having a removal in that capacity is good in the sideboard, not so good in the main deck, generally speaking. Ooh, okay, Sunlance. Uh, sorcery for one white. Deals three damage to target non-white creature. Uh, this is a really good card, actually. Um, now, again, it is important to note that it doesn't hit white creatures, so there is a possibility that you're running up against uh, a white deck and this really has no target, which is certainly not good, but it is three damage for one mana. Now, again, sorcery speed two, but there's a lot to love about this card. It's a good little efficient removal spell, so it is something to consider. I don't know that I'd take it over the Marauders, but I'm going to set them both to the side and we'll see where we land later in the pack. All right, Vampiric Link. Uh, enchant creature for one black. When the enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. So this is essentially lifelink um, on a black card, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't love this. Generally, I shy away from enchant creatures in limited because you're investing a lot in one creature. If they just remove it, you've lost two cards, not just one. Generally, that's a bad idea. And so I try to avoid picking these up if I can. They're filler for sure. And this is a good effect. I mean, lifelink is great, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily want this as a early pick for sure and really even in the deck at all because you're relying on a creature being on the field for you to attach it to. All right, our first uncommon, Pong of Five. One blue for an instant. Destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated and that creature puts a 3-3 green ape creature token into play. I actually really like this card. Uh, so, so far, I think this is the pick. It's instant speed. It's not regulated by a color. And uh, it's, it completely destroys a creature, which is really good. Now, I know there is a 3-3 in its place, but uh, there's a lot of ways that you can utilize this that's actually really, really good. And obviously, if you're losing to a big creature, a 3-3 is better than a big creature. Generally, you can outpower that at some point throughout the game. This just is a really efficient way to deal with it. Sure, they get a token, but I think it's worth it. So definitely the pick so far. Uh, interesting. Waning Worm. Three and a black for a 7-6 with Vanishing 2. Uh, and that's it. Um, I don't know that I love this. Um, I, I'm not sure. The Vanishing 2 is the tricky part uh, because obviously it just goes away very shortly after you've played it. Uh, two is not a lot. Now I know we did like it on the Kelden Marauders, but it came in earlier in the game. Uh, this is just a creature that deals some damage, but then, you know, I, I, don't, I don't love it. I'm just going to go ahead and say I don't love it. I don't know that that's correct. I'll be honest. I, I have no idea, but I don't think I would take it. Uh, I think I would much rather just have a creature that sticks around uh, and not necessarily has all the power and toughness here. So maybe that's wrong. I don't know, but I think I like Pogify better. Ooh, Keen Sense. Enchant creature for one green. Uh, when the enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you can draw a card. This is actually a really sick card in Constructed. <laughs> uh, it's not very good in Limited, I don't think, although it can be. Uh, even if you get one attack in, you're replacing itself, so it still is much better than something like the Vampiric Link that we saw earlier. 
However, you are still relying on a creature on the field, and I don't necessarily think that's always going to be the case. It also has to get in for damage, and sometimes you're going to be either in a board stall position or just outpowered. And in that case, this is basically useless, so I'd much rather have an action spell, not a reliance spell. So, for me, I don't think I would take this, but I'm actually really happy to pull this, because Keen Sense is a really good card. And our rare is Intet the Dreamer. Look at this, 6-6 six, six for 6. Uh, teamer colors and 3. It does have flying. It When it deals combat damage to a player, you can pay 2 and a blue. Uh, if you do, remove the top card from your deck and uh, from the game face down. You can look at that card as long as it remains removed from the game. You can play that card without paying its mana cost as long as Intet remains in play. I mean, I think this is the pick. It's a little mana intensive, obviously. You do have to have three colors, which I don't know how well that would have been supported during this time. I think mostly it would have been a two color format, but I mean, that's a really good effect. Uh, and it's a really powerful game ending kind of card. So I think this is definitely the pick. I do really love Intet as well. In fact, I made a digital altar of Intet not that long ago. Uh, beautiful, beautiful card and not a great like value engine for any means, but it's a really pretty one and a very powerful one for limited. So I think that's got to be my pick, guys. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. So that is the end of our Planar Chaos pack opening. Uh, again, don't do this at home. Uh, if you happen to have these packs, definitely hold on to them. This is not a good idea, but it was really fun to look through these old cards, have a little bit of that nostalgia kind of bringing it back. Uh, I don't think we had the best pack in the world. We obviously didn't get a lot of value, which is, I think, what you would expect to see. <laughs> uh, so do keep that in mind if you've got any of these. But it's an absolute blast to share this with you guys. I really do appreciate you guys watching, hopefully learning something. I, I don't have a lot to share on these limited packs because I didn't necessarily play limited back in the day, but I've learned a lot since then. And so I'm hoping I can share that with you and have some fun with the pack opening in general. If you guys want to see more of these pack openings, let me know. Maybe you have a set you'd like me to open or something like that. Definitely let me know in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it, guys. But thank you so much. I really do uh, enjoy these. It's, a, it's an absolute blast to open up some packs for you guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.